the recording will be published in next website within two weeks after webinar finish. Today, there will be a community talk from a representative from Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing, followed by a 20-minute talk from each speaker. Today, we have six speakers from, Thai, from China and Thailand. So stay tuned until the end of this seminar for two and a half hours. This very minute, may I invite Professor Thailak Tasayapong as Secretary General of the in Information Technology Foundation under the initiative initiative of Her Royal Highness Princess Mahasaki Srinthorn and the Chairman of the Executive Board of Nanotech Nasda Thailand to commence today's meeting by giving welcome remarks. Please, Professor Pellas. Professor Sing Ji Liang, NCNST, People's Republic of China, Professor Bao Shui Ting, NCNST People's Republic of China, Kun Pasupa, Minister Counselor for Science from the Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great, great pleasure to welcome all of you to this special event and highlight the seminar on China-Thailand collaboration on nanotechnology for health from sciences to applications. This workshop seminar is organized in parallel with NASDA annual conference on next 2022, the bilateral collaboration on nanotechnology between China and Thailand was initiated by the vision and leadership of Her Royal Highness Princess Maha Chakri Silinton towards science, technology, and innovation since 2013. The honorary signing ceremony on nanotechnology collaboration between National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, or NCNST, and the National Nanotechnology Center, or Nanotech, was held, was held on, on the 7th of April, April 2013. Since then, many collaborative research activities have been created and carried out. These include fundamental research towards application in the field of nanopesticide, nanomedicine, nano delivery system, and nano sensors, people to people exchange program, and co supervision of PhD candidates. As the Secretary General of the Information Technology Foundation, under the initiative of Her Royal Highness, Princess Mahajakri Silinton, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to dedicated professors from NCNST regarding the core supervision of the Thai PhD candidates. My sincere thanks should be delivered to both supervisors from NCNST, Professor Sing Ji Liang and Professor Bao Shui Ting, as well as our Thai supervisor from Nanotech, Dr. Kathawut Namdi and Dr. Duan Penja Plung for the valuable mentorship and technical guidance given to Thai PhD candidates. From University of Chinese Academy of Science, or UCAS, under the Royal Thai Government Scholarship Program, this activity has clearly demonstrated an effective way for tangible and impactful collaborations between NCNST and Nanotech, which greatly enhance professional capabilities of the student and establishing strong S&T network 
on nanotechnology between China and Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, I very much hope that in the spirit of strong collaboration between our two countries, through fruitful and productive discussions at this workshop, we will significantly contribute to our future collaborative success. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful remarks. Now to deliver her opening remarks, may I invite Dr. Vani Chin Sripun, an Executive Director of Nanotechnology Thailand to give the opening remarks. Please, Dr. Vani. Yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon once again. Sawadika, everyone. Um, let me begin then. Professor Pairat Tachaya Pong, Dr. Pasupa Chinnawara Park, Minister Counselor for Science, Science and Technology Section, Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing. Professor Sing Ji Liang, Professor Pao Xia Ting, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my great pleasure and honor to welcome all to this special event and to deliver the opening remarks at this workshop or seminar on China-Thailand collaboration on nanotechnology for health from science to applications. I am very delighted that today we have representatives from several partner organizations. So allow me to first extend our special warm welcome and sincere appreciation to all for your presence. Your continued support and collaborations are highly appreciated always. Ladies and gentlemen, as we heard from Professor Pirat regarding background and key information of our collaborations. The collaborations between NCNST under Chinese Academy of Science, CAS, and Nanotech under National Science and Technology Development Agency, NSTDA, started in 2013 in the areas of nanomedicine, nano delivery systems, nano pesticides and nano sensors. So far, there have been many facets of corporations, including international advisory board members, R&D collaborative projects, and joint supervision of doctoral students from UKS under the Royal Thai Government Scholarship Program. We, both sides, Nanotech and NCNST, have shared research facilities exchange technological knowledges and experiences in such joint projects and supervision proposals. It is our aim, ladies and gentlemen, that the obtained knowledge and um, human resource development could contribute to nanoscience and nanotechnology, and in turn, having constructive impact to the society and economy by implementations. With regard to the objectives of this workshop, the overall objective is to strengthen our relationships between Thailand and the People's Republic of China, of course, with proper alignment of both national policies on science, technology, and innovation. The specific objective is therefore to promote the co-supervision activity between NCNST and Nanotech this can effectively include grad students and PhD candidates. In this regard, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the, to the Info Information Technology Foundation under the initiative of Her Royal Highness Princess Mahajakri Sirinton, Office of the Civil Service Commission, OCSC, Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing, co-supervisors from both NCNST and Nanotech, and PhD candidates from UKS, Royal Thai Government Scholarship Program. For the joint supervision initiative, I would like to express my special thanks once again to Professor Sing Chi Liang, Dr. Kathabut Namdi, Professor Pao Chia Ting, Dr. Duan Pen Cha Prung. Thank you very much for doing for your dedication and valuable support, resulting in a very, very constructive progress 
on our cooperations. Currently, we have two PhD candidates from UKS, Mr. Piyawat Piti Kulatham and um, Ms. Pirunrat Det Bamrung, to conduct their research under cohort supervisors from NCNST and Nanotech. Both PhD candidates are really motivated, duty bound, and hardworking. Their research findings are academically interesting and their performances are excellent. Well, I also wish all of our collaborative efforts will significantly contribute to our future cooperative expansions and success. Finally, this is a good time, proper time for me to declare the opening of this workshop on China-Thailand collaborations on nanotechnology for health from science to applications and wish you all a very fruitful day with enjoyable discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your beautiful work. Before we continue, we will have a brief full photo session to record this special occasion. May I invite all speakers Turn on your camera and give it and give us a big smile. Okay, so everyone turn on your camera already. Okay. It's big smile, right? Big smile, okay. Three, two, one, see. One more time. Three, two, one, see. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now let's get started. It's my great pleasure to invite our panel speaker, Dr. Pasupa Chinwarasopha. He is Kalendi Minister Counselor for Science and Technology Section from Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing, China. She was a scientist at Technology Transfer Center, Office of Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Science and Technology in Thailand for eight years. And she was a policy and plan analyst more than 15 years. She also had an experience to be a project manager of science, technology, and innovation for one sample, one, one product, or auto, upgrade, and clinic technology project. In a flash, Dr. Prasad is going to present on Thailand and China STI cooperation. Now the screen is yours. Professor Dr. Pailat Tachayapong, Secretary General of the Information Technology Foundation, under the initiative of Her Royal Highness Princess Mahajagri Selinton, and Chairman of the Executive Board of National Nanotechnology Center, National Science and Technology Development Agency. Dr. Wanni Chin Sirit Kun, Executive Director of the National Nanotechnology Center, National Science and Technology Development Agency. Professor Dr. Liang Xing Jia, Chief Chair Professor Nanobiology, College of Nano Science and Technology, University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Professor Dr. Ting Bao Xuan, Principal Investigator, National Center for Nano Science and Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed my great pleasure to be here today as part of the Thailand China on Nanotechnology for Health from Sciences to Application in the 17 National Science and Technology Development Agency Annual Conference 2022. I would like to extend my appreciation to the National Nanotechnology Center of the National Science Technology Development Agency for giving me the opportunity to share the story of Thailand and China in science, technology, and innovation cooperation today. Ladies and gentlemen, nearly a half century ago, Thailand and China formally established diplomatic relations on July 1st, 1975. Three years later, the agreement on scientific and technical cooperation between the government of the Kingdom of Thailand and the government of the People's Republic of China was signed in March 1978, which is the first and foremost framework of the two countries' long relationship. The first science and technology bilateral relationship has been developing in a sound and stable manner over the past 44 years with the 22 meetings. 
the Sino-Thai Joint Committee of the Scientific and Technical Cooperation has approved hundreds of bilateral projects in the area of agriculture, information technology, science technology and innovation, energy, and public health between the two countries. The cooperation between the Ministry of Science and Technology of Thailand and the Ministry of Science and Technology of China started in 2005. In 2013, the agreement on promoting four cooperation projects between the two ministries was signed in the following four areas, Joint Research Center on a High-Speed Railway, Remote Sensing Satellite Data Sharing and Service Platform, Technology Transfer Cooperation, and Talented Young Scientists Visiting Program. Ministry of Science and Technology of Thailand launches cooperation with the Chinese Academy of Sciences in 2006. Ten years later, in 2016, both sides signed another MOU on um, support the de development of science, technology, and innovation in Eastern Economic Corridor of Innovation, or EECI, and Bell and Road Initiative. In May 2019, Thailand's Ministry of Science and Technology was transformed to Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation. In the same year, the MOU on promoting scientific, technical and innovative cooperation between the new ministry and the Ministry of Science and Technology of China was signed. Apart from cooperation at the government and ministerial levels, China and Thailand also have another science and technology cooperation, such as the following. In 2013, Thailand's National Nanotechnology Center cooperated with the National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Both sites have collaborated in nanomedicine, nano delivery system, nano pesticides, and nano sensor through research seminars and an internal and international advisory board. In 2015, the Thailand and China Technology Transfer Center was established at the Thailand Science Park. In 2017, the Chinese Academy of Sciences Innovation Cooperation Center Bangkok was opened in Bangkok. In 2019, Huawei Thailand, together with the National Science and Technology Development Agency and the National Innovation Agency of Thailand, set up the Huawei Academy in Thailand to train digital experts and ICT personnel to work in ASEAN member countries. In 2021, the China ASEAN Technology Transfer Center and the Chinese Academy of Science Innovation Cooperation Center Bangkok launched the China Thailand ASEAN Innovation Hub in Bangkok. While science and technology and innovation cooperation is currently flourishing, the education collaboration between Thailand and China is also focusing on science and technology. One of the important scientific human resources development has been initiated between Thailand's Office of the Civil Service Commission and the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences, or UCAS, which is one of the affiliates of Chinese Academy of Sciences. This MOU was inaugurated in 2009 under the initiative of Her Royal Highness Princess Mahachakri Selinthorn's vision of the Chinese advanced science, technology, and innovation development, not only in a basic and applied science, but also in education. Recently, there is one graduate and five current Thai students in nanotechnology at UCAS. Last year, I learned that the National Nanotechnology Center initiated joint supervision between the nanotech Thai PhD candidates from UCAS and their advisors. The core advisor system will help not only in mentoring students, but also in providing more opportunities to share resources between the two institutes that will certainly lead to the future productive collaboration. It is a privilege for both sides, and I am pleased to support the project going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, as a Minister Counselor for Science and Technology, 
and a representative of Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation at the Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing. I have always believed that the real ambassadors in education are Thai students who study in China. They play an important role in connecting Thai and Chinese institutes, university, and laboratories. They are the ideal linkage between Thai researchers and Chinese professors. Indeed, their academic and research work has contributed to science, technology, and innovation development of both countries. Ladies and gentlemen, nanotechnology provides many benefits in many areas of life. Many everyday commercial products on the market today rely on nanotechnology from health to wealth, such as medicine, food safety, environmental science, information technology, energy, national security, and many other sectors. Nanotechnology helps to significantly improve many technological and industrial sectors. For example, nanotechnology is already reading to dramatic improvement in healthcare by using nanoparticles to target tumors in drug delivery system and to improve medical imaging. Today's seminar, Thailand and China on nanotechnology for health from science to applications is most interesting as a manifestation of science, technology and innovation long-term relationship between Thailand and China that addresses the challenge of future of turning the next great idea into a prototype, which, which then becomes a quality product for the global market. I strongly believe that Thailand and China can work together in expanding and implementing research and development in nanotechnology, including conferences and the strong U.S. alumni in Thailand to serve the benefit of academia, economic transformation, and social development. Last but not least, I wish the seminar the greatest success. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful presentation. So uh, any questions from panelists or attendees? Well, not, not a question, but I would like to um, say a few words to thank Dr. Pasupa very much for your very, very um, nice and meaningful presentation for us all. Thank you so much, really. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Pasupa. So next, may I invite Dr. Uh, Professor Xing Xi Liang, Chief Chef Professor on Nanobiology, College of Nanoscience and Technology, University of Chinese Academy of Science, Test Center for Excellence in Nanoscience, Nano Center for Nanoscience and Technology, or NCNST, Test NASDAQ, uh, Test China, sorry. His research interests are in elucidating mechanisms to improve the ability and nanomedicinal bioavailability by nanotechnology in vitro and in vivo, and novel strategies to increase therapeutic efficiency on cancer and infective diseases. Please join me in welcoming Professor Sin Zilian. Okay. Oh, where is my slides? Uh, uh, slide oh. is not coming uh, yet. Uh, how about now? Yeah. Everything is okay? You can I, I see your can, slide, right? Yeah, I can see your slide now. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, firstly, uh, thanks, uh, Chairman, uh, for the introduction. Also, thanks uh, for this work. Great opportunity uh, to meet the old friends and the new friends. Uh, I will uh, take these 20 minutes to introduce the collaboration between uh, my group uh, with the Thailand group. Uh, firstly, I uh, a little bit sorry because I changed the topic. Uh, I will tell you, uh, give you a little bit of explanation why I changed the, uh, the today's topic. Uh, firstly, uh, I'm Xin Jiliang uh, from Nano Center. 
I gave you a very brief introduction about uh, the study in our group. Uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, we are affiliated with the uh, Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, we are mostly, uh, our effort is focused on the, the world fundamental basic research. Uh, we mainly focus on uh, to study, to clarify uh, what's the, the, the fundamental uh, mechanism uh, between, uh, for the interaction between the nanostructure and uh, biological system. Besides the uh, fundamental research, uh, we are also work on, uh, we named basic translational research. We focus on the other different kind of uh, uh, nanoscale drug delivery systems. Uh, since I uh, teaching a course named uh, nanobiology uh, at the University of Chinese Academy of Science, so we all, we also uh, talk lots of uh, uh, topic on you know how to design nanostructure, uh, what's the the principle, why we need to study uh, the nanobiology. Uh, but anyway, uh, we really want to use the developed uh, the nano uh, structures. Uh, for to develop the, a different kind of nano drugs, uh, within nano pharmaceutical uh, uh, the studies. So, uh, why I want to change today's topic uh, to uh, you know the uh, shown in the in the title uh, because uh, I have a, a collaboration uh, with the Thailand group. Uh, which is uh, based on a grant uh, we got from the Ministry of Science Technology of China. Uh, it's mainly focused on we developed the nanoscale uh, lipid-based drug delivery system to treat the, the COVID-19. Uh, because as you know, COVID-19 is a very serious pandemic problem, uh, not only to each country, uh, even to the whole world. So we based on this uh, very uh, uh, important uh, uh, topic. Uh, so we got this grant uh, 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 supported by the government. Uh, so uh, we also uh, get the support uh, from Chinese Academy of Science, uh, which is the uh, uh, support collaboration between our group uh, with the uh, here is show the Katao uh, Namdi, a professor. I know uh, Professor uh, Nandi we, so, we also gave a little introduction about his work after my talk. So besides this uh, program, uh, we, really, uh, we also have uh, other four Thailand students work in my group. Uh, you know, the left side is two, na two names of girls, the right side are two names uh, the, the two name of boys. So these four students works very well uh, at our group. They were excellent students. Uh, were nice, uh, very collaborative, uh, how well uh, done the very good uh, teamwork. Uh, also, Tier Pong Yata also uh, actually helped us a lot, you know, to uh, train, uh, co educate the training uh, the students in the Thai life science. Uh, so, that's the basic idea uh, why I want to change today's topic a little bit. Uh, I want to just uh, uh, tell the participants uh, some recent our work uh, actually is really done uh, between the China and, uh, uh, and Thailand. So uh, to do this uh, program, I know uh, the the part right, uh, you know the, uh, the 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 a girl student also works uh, uh, in our group for this project. He, she also will give a little bit of, uh, introduction about this. Uh, a project with more details, how we work on that, uh, what's the, 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 the materials, what's the protocol, uh, the, the, the whole uh, details of, of this project. So I just give you a big picture about, uh, uh, about our proposal between, uh, uh, between you know, China and Thailand, uh, how we want to uh, work uh, to solve this uh, COVID-19 problem with nanotechnology. So firstly, uh, uh, you, you know the RNP is a very successful uh, vaccine. It's really based on the nano uh, delivery system. Uh, in terms of the uh, delivery system, we actually also worked on this for a while. 
uh, this uh, I give you just a couple example. Uh, years ago, we worked on uh, nano lipsum, uh, which is a uh, temperature sensitive. We use it to uh, deliver uh, different drugs to treat the uh, uh, the resistance the bacteria infection. So that's the the lipid, the nano lipid based uh, uh, delivery system. Besides this, we also uh, have a dendromer based delivery system, uh, which is uh, can be used after degrade can be used as aggregate to increase the uh, antibody anti antigens per, uh, the precise. Uh, we call the the antigen precise. Uh, 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 you know, uh, th th this pathway. So uh, here is some uh, details why we want to use this dendromer based uh, materials as a uh, delivery system uh, to uh, increase, to, to help the immunotherapy basically. Uh, actually, we also uh, works on a polymer based delivery system, which is a polymer as a backbone uh, with the, some amino acid modified on the brush. Uh, the amino acid can be changed the form is the uh, ac acidic environment sensitive. So in the acidic environment, the uh, amino acid uh, will be uh, self assembling into the sheet, into the sheet for uh, the form, it will broken the lysosome and release the antigen more efficient, make a precise antigen and uh, uh, later on to activate the T cell uh, you, uh, the, the, to activate the immune system. So that's the basic idea uh, we developed a couple of years ago. So why I want to show you know this little bit background, uh, just want to, to let you know, uh, because the nanostructure of the delivery system is a very basic uh, point for us to do this uh, Thailand China uh, collaboration. Uh, we how, uh, uh, as I told you, we have a couple of systems we already developed, well studied in the group. Uh, it, they are bio compatible, they also uh, degradable. It's a worry, uh, it's a concern, it's a, it's a make sense for us. We need to develop them further while uh, for the clinical use. So that's the, that's the purpose I gave you a little bit of background. But uh, anyhow, uh, the, the major point uh, we really want to uh, develop is the lipid-based nano uh, particle. Uh, why is that? Because I already know the COVID-19 is a worldwide problem. Uh, you know, here is I just show some uh, background. The vaccine uh, is a very important uh, way to treat uh, this uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, for the vaccine, the, the very critical technique is to develop a delivery system. Uh, right now, uh, everybody uh, knows it's the lipid on a particle. But for this particle, there are some very important points we need to uh, improve. Because uh, even though it's worldwide used, but uh, you know, it's the particle is encapsulated with mRNA, but uh, the efficacy is especially to the release efficacy is very low, only 4%. It means you need to inject uh, a large amount of uh, particle-based mRNA into the under the muscle, but only uh, four percent of them can be effectively function. So that's one of the function. Another thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, for this uh, uh, for this system, it is it, uh, patent protected. Uh, even now, they still have the, the controversial, uh, controversial, you know, uh, you know, fight. Uh, between uh, who owns this uh, uh, patent, but that's another thing. It's, it's not scientific things. But for us, we really want to develop some uh, some some uh, lipid-based polymers because that's the 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 the, the core. This is the key point uh, for this whole system. Because all the other three components, they are very uh, well known. Everybody know uh, it's easy to access. So only this uh, uh, lipid-based polymer uh, is the patent protected, and also is uh, is very critical to synthesize to get a high quality uh, FDA approved. is is not easy. So we want to work with the uh, uh, with the uh, you know uh, our collaborator in Thailand 
uh, to based on this polymer develop our own uh, the nano uh, delivery system to develop the the vaccine or other kind of uh, uh, you know treatment uh, uh, drugs. So here is the formula about this uh, nano system. Uh, the point is this uh, lipid based polymer, but uh, they have uh, uh, two very important uh, parameter uh, we have to uh, to develop for this uh, uh, material. It has to be ionizable. It means as an acidic, it will change to the uh, uh, to the to the surface charge. As an acidic environment, it has to be show the positive charge on the surface. But uh, with uh, the 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 pH value increase, the surface charge will be changed gradually. As the pH natural, uh, like a pH 7.4, this condition is become a negative, negative charge. So it's really based on chemical modification of the uh, lipid, lipid based polymer, spe specific to the uh, hydrophilic head of these uh, materials. Of, of course, the, the tail part is also important. Uh, because uh, the, the saturated or unsaturated tail is will affect the toxicity of these materials, even the stability of the uh, uh, delivery system. Here is some principle we have to follow. Actually, in this point, there are lots of study. Uh, the, the groups from all over the world, world already put a lot of effort on this field. So, uh, so far, uh, the, the people already know some principle that limit uh, to develop to screening this kind of particle, uh, this kind of material, because they have a certain kind of uh, uh, criteria, uh, criteria or standards, uh, how to uh, select, how to screen the head part, the neck part, even the tail, because only these three parts, we just uh, combine them, optimize uh, the each ratio and the each part, the finally get the uh, you know, uh, edible, uh, the amphiphilic the, the lipid polymer. So that's the, the, the principle we have to follow. We have to follow. Uh, this, uh, uh, as I tell you, because already have uh, already commercialized, but even that, they still have uh, lots of uh, disadvantage. We have to uh, improve. We have to improve them. So the many, uh, Country actually put a lot of effort, you know, to develop this because you know the COVID nineteen still uh, right now is a serious problem. It's a pandemic worldwide. Uh, even though uh, we believe it will be gone uh, sooner or later, but uh, we nobody know what's the next disease will come out soon in future. Therefore, this system is 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 a serious problem. is a is a is a very critical important to us. I'm sorry uh, for this. Uh, uh, slide. I, I show some Chinese character, but anyhow, that's the natural how for the naturally for the uh, for for the for the uh, you know the plus membrane component. There are only these uh, eight component. So all this uh, natural lipid based polymer, uh, the, the the delivery system is based the lipid component. But uh, in, in naturally only these eight kind of. Uh, Phospholipid. So we just uh, just mimic this natural phospholipid. We get the uh, you know uh, we first get the, the the bank the chemical bank to screening the different part of this polymer. Follow the previously identified uh, the principles. Uh, here is a. The still is something uh, published uh, by other groups. I just want to show, uh, you know, uh, this uh, study is very crowded, uh, is very important, and a lot of people uh, jump this field, but also uh, work and get uh, a great progress uh, right now. But for us, we uh, really want to work with, uh, uh, you know, with Professor Katsu, uh, work together to identify the screening Explore the new or new uh, lipid based polymer and make it uh, work is better. Have a very high, uh, the, 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 let's say, the transfecting fixy, how very high uh, the payload uh, here is mean MRA, the release efficacy, and show the very good 
uh, you know, the vaccine protein expression, uh, even that, we also can uh, change the MRI to any kind of target, uh, as long as uh, here we want to develop some secret protein. Based on the uh, ECR tools, anybody, we want to make it a secret protein to prevent the, uh, the COVID-19, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. So it's the basic idea. Here, I just show you the, some, uh, some concept, uh, which kind of uh, uh, the head, which kind of the tail heart we want to design, and how we screen them, how we use the uh, uh, artificial intelligence, how we use the, the big data to analysis to get you know different kind of this polymer. We really want this uh, catalytic uh, add, uh, you know, uh, have the hydrophilic uh, pH sensitive the the, the the property. Uh, this kind of uh, a study. So that that's the concept that we we really want to follow. We really want to uh, work on. Uh, one important point is uh, what's the difference. For our uh, system, compared to the internationally, like the Mardara, like the Pfizer company, uh, already matured system. So our system, actually, we make it uh, uh, more compatible uh, to the uh, to the organ. It means when you eat, because right now all the, this uh, system is only can be allowed to use the to the intramuscle uh, administration. But for us, uh, besides the, the traditional administrative way, we, we also want to develop the IV injection administration, the, the, uh, the, the formula. So to do that, we have to make the system can be matched with the organ. It means it's kind of, kind of a property to selectively target to the different organ. So it should really depend on the component uh, optim optimization to form this kind of function. So uh, the details I want I don't want to give you too much because uh, it's a little bit specific. Actually, uh, my two students uh, they worked in the U.S. but just uh, come back to China uh, last year. Uh, worked at the Beijing uh, Future Technology College. Uh, another works at, uh, also in the Chinese Academy of Science in the Institute of Zoology. They they are folks who put a lot effort on this system right now. Uh, so finally, I know I only have uh, 20 minutes to give this presentation. I want to give a one or two minutes for the any question. But I think how the take home message is I uh, really uh, want to work on the edible aphetic polymer. Uh, right now, we still focus on the COVID 19 treatment. Uh, but uh, when we uh, administrate the in vivo, is how the we kind of select you to target to the different organ. We really want to focus on the lung and the, uh, and the other uh, organ for that purpose. So I thank this opportunity. Uh, thanks for your participation. Thanks for your patience. I also thank my collabor collaborator, Professor uh, Katao uh, Nandi, uh, you know, who will give a uh, next talk after my uh, presentation. I also thank the, pre uh, the, the students, uh, Perrin Wright, uh, you know, she also will give uh, uh, details about this study. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for the great presentation. So, any questions from the panelists and attendees? May I ask one question, Professor Liang? <laughs> Due to the um, Hasnata project, sorry, project that you received about the uh, SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, so uh, I would like to know that how long uh, the vaccine to pass the Chinese FDA in China. When when you finish the vaccine already, and how how uh, when will it run? Uh, actually, it's it's a little bit uh, it's the, the the management the policy is the question. Uh, I. I'm not sure, uh, you know, how long the Chinese FDA can approve this kind of vaccine. But I know uh, in China we have a couple of company. Uh, they already uh, uh, get the certification approval. Uh, in China, we are in the, you know, phase three in the clinic in the phase three. Uh, if the, uh, the 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 functional uh, can be further approved with a uh, more population. I believe it will be approved, uh, uh, you know, very soon, very soon. But it really depends on 
uh, the currently uh, the COVID nineteen condition because right now the China uh, government control uh, this disease very well. Uh, we still use the old version of the vaccine. We not uh, uh, you know use the you you use the uh, the new uh, for formulation right now. Very much. <laughs> Any questions from participants? I have one question. So, sorry. Go, go ahead. Dr. Dian Pen, go ahead. Yes. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Dian Pen from, from Nanotech. So thank you very much for your really interesting talk. Um, for your synthetic lipid, have you tried to test about like a stability of the lipid? In term of is that is form like a liposome, so like a how about the half life of the lifetime of the lipid that you synthesize? Uh, thanks for your question. Uh, definitely, we have to uh, think about the stability uh, because finally we use we we will make it. Uh, uh, we didn't put it in, into the powder formula. We still use it as a liquid, so the stability is very important. Uh, you know, uh, currently, uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna, the how to keep this uh, uh, vaccine at the minus 40 degree or minus 17 degree. Right now, we develop this at the minus 20 degree. So that's uh, because we have the different uh, formula, uh, different uh, the, 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 the new uh, formula, uh, the, the polymer uh, to do that. Uh, so the stability is important, uh, but uh, it, it, one basically is not a lipso. It's a it's not a lipso. It, it, we call the lipoplex. It is a complex. It's not a, the structure is, is totally different with the lipso with the traditional lipso. So uh, I I I can give you the you know the the some uh, uh, materials uh, later uh, about the the, the 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 details of the structure. Uh, we are focused on. You know, to think to screen and synthesize the new kind of uh, lipopolymer, uh, the the tail part, the the site saturate and the unsaturated condition of the tail is uh, is more critical to affect the stability of this uh, lipoplex. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Your question. Would you like to ask? Yeah, I have a very brief um, question. Thank you very much, first of all, for your presentation and for um, strong collaboration and supervision with us. Um, you have shared with us very challenging work. Um, you mentioned about in vivo payload delivery for um, organ adaptation. So, my simple question would be do you have any um, potential? organ in your work development that you would shoot for in the first place? Uh, uh, thank you, Annie. Very nice to see you. I, I, I basically, uh, right now, we focus on the lung, lung organ. Uh, because uh, currently, this period, we still want to uh, solve the COVID-19, uh, even though it will be gone sooner or later. But right now, the government gave us a grant still focused on to treat the uh, COVID-19. So COVID-19, but we use a different way. We we didn't uh, uh, do the intramuscle administration. We basically use the uh, you know nasal, nasal uh, administration. Uh, uh, but we uh, express the secret secret uh, uh, CRT2 protein. So it's total different way uh, compared to with the Pfizer and uh, Madura. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much once again, Professor Dr. Wan Li and Dr. Uh, Professor Xi Liang for your presentation. Next, uh, may I invite Dr. Sathawut Nandi to give a talk on improvement of the multi performance biocollectivity of cardiceptin using bioneosome or hydrosancial hybrid nanoparticle. Dr. Sathawut is a researcher at Nanotech. His research expertise. Uh, double system in virtual assay and in vivo model. Now the floor is yours, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kata Wood Namdi from 
the researcher from Nanotechnology Center. It's really my honor and pleasure to give you a presentation today to strengthen the collaborations between Thai and uh, Chinese collaborations. And, and thank you for Dr. Liang to come to give a talk with us today. And really, it's really impressive the talk that you give about the our collaborations project and about uh, what's the idea that we're gonna do in the next step. So today is I gonna give the talk in the different way. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna talk about the nanotech technologies made medicine. First of all, I want to just introduce what is the nano medicines. Nano medicine is a fair use of the applied uh, nanotechnologies to prevent the uh, or prove or treat or prevent the disease. It might involve about uh, using the nanoscale materials, just as the biocompatible nanoparticles or nano robotic or uh, nano diagnosis. The delivery uh, or using the delivery system for the uh, for deliver therapeutic substance into the living organisms, which is the in our lab, do really expert in the organic nano particles that use to encap uh, the therapeutic agents such as earth, chemical drug, or biopharmatics into the, the, the uh, living organic organisms. And another size in organic nanoparticles, I think the Dr. Den Pen is an expert in that using this kind of uh, nanomaterial to use in the diagnosis applications. So in our laboratories, our research emphasizes in using nanotechnology for develop of target delivery system and control release of nanoparticles on drug biological products, urban herbal revised bioactive compound to achieve introduce uh, innovative products such as pharmaceuticals, vaccines, uh, medical supplies, as well as the healthcare products. And also the most important missions of our laboratory is to transfer our technology to industrial or private sector. And moreover, not just only human, we also extend our techno technology to apply our drug delivery system into the veterinary, veterinary applications as well. So in the theme of the Thailand, China or nanotech technology for health, I'm gonna choose one of my research that talking today, which is the improvements of the monthly performance of the caldicepin using the our uh, hybrid nanoparticle that's called biloniosome called core cathosan shells hybrid nanoparticles. Let me just uh, start about uh, information about the caldicepin. As you know, that's caldicepin or we called in Thailand is Tang Chao. I'm, I'm not sure what it's called in Chinese, but it is a compound that's uh, extract from cordyceps, which is widely used in the traditional medicines, especially in China. It has this pay several uh, pharma, pharmaceutical activities, include the anti inflame anti-cancel, anti-angiogenesis and also antioxidants. You see that have very, very uh, cover ev every pharmaceutical effects. However, the oral administrations of quadricepin has the lim limitations due to its poor bioavailability uh, in their use. Therefore, the nano medicines are used in the nano particles, nano calorie form is, might be used to overcome these limitations. So in this study, I'm showing you that I um, developed the hybrid nano particles to improve several of bio characteristics of cholecipin, such as we're gonna uh, increase stability in the GI tract or gastrointestinal tract increase the mucoadhesive adhesion property because in our digestive system, we have the mucus 
uh, so all have requests all along the track. So mucoethnicity property may be increased uh, absorptions of, uh, of the bioactive compounds. And so also the thing that uh, we select to, to model, the uh, select as the model to, to clarify to enhance our nanoparticle which is the anti-cancer activity again the colorectal cancer. So, as you see in the schemic nanoparticle, well, it's really simple preparing using the just solvent injection technique that is usually used in the industrial uh, scale. Biloni also we call that biloni also is come from the by cells inside the uh, nano carriers with the uh, with the uh, non-ionic surfactants in this for formulations because the uh, by cell is really natural mechanism when you uh, when you eat the fat or the lipid in your stomach. Once of the emulsions, uh, I mean the natural food surfactant is the by cells. Uh, when you combine the by cell in our in the nano system, it might be compensated with the highly acidic in our stomach. So the compound not very easy to digest with the strong acidic environment. So oh sorry. Moreover, uh, we increase the mucoethnicity system by we cause the chitosan by O polymer to functionalize uh, these uh, nano carriers and also increase the mucoethnicities uh, in our GI tract. Uh, this is just our result. And you see that we successful uh, uh, synthesis of nano particles that's entrap cordyceps over 80% of encapsulation efficiency. And we also determine the optimal conditions of the particle with the chitosan ratio for the nanoparticle coating shells. As well as you can see in the result, you see the uh, particle size is in around 200 with uh, stability is over 30 days in uh, uh, room temps. And in the right hand side is the con compositions of of the nano particle in the schemic is compared to the TEM image, so you kind of it's kind of look like each each other. So, not uh, the first thing that we want to know is about the stability of biloniosome in the GI tract. We incubate the biloniosome in both in both the plastic fluid and Intestinal, uh, intestinal fluid and see how the size and the chart change in each time points. You can see from the results, our biloniosomes can remain their size and in both the in classic conditions and also intestinal conditions over 30, uh, uh, over 60 minutes. Uh, this one is compared with the conventional nano particles. These results suggest that when you convert, uh, com incorporate by cells into the nanoparticles, the membrane of the carriers can more flexible and can compensate with, uh, with uh, uh, their structure under the acidic env environments. And moreover, the nanoparticles contain the by cells can inhibit the protease activities because the pepsin cannot diffuse through uh, our nanoparticles membrane. So that's why we can uh, deliver our compound to the, uh, the point that we want to, the organ that we want to target that is the uh, small intestine. Furthermore, we uh, test with the mucoethnicity property of our nano particles by use the in vitro mucin assays, followed by just only simple that we mentioned just the psi and theta potentials. According to the result, you see that uh, the theta potentials value 
it shifts from the positive charge to the negative charge after uh, we add more mucin. The positive charge of uh, uh, Biloni ozone was neutralized by the mucin. So uh, this regime we cannot uh, observe in the control nanoparticles. Like the size, Biloni ozone, when we incubate with the mucin, is the size is larger, like four, uh, two or three fold, larger than original size. That means they can uh, have the property of the mucoethnicity property. So from this result, we clearly show that uh, our particle success in, in the uh, mucoethnicity property. So in the next, after uh, they can adhere into the uh, mucus membrane, so the next they can permeate permeate me like come across the the intestinal in intestinal uh, epitheliums or not. So the next we assess the ability of our biloni osome to translocate across the uh, intestinal tract. We use just in vitro models of the human intestinal epithelium cell. The cordyceps nano lotus nano particles and and uh, and and, and uh, encapsulated cordyceps uh, were applied into our models and co cultures over six hours. And next, we just uh, collect or the bottom part, there's cholesterol uh, that they go through the membrane and measure the concentrations. And as you can see the result, our particle can reveal the significant higher of cholesterol trans locate uh, compared to the just cholesterol uh, compound. You see that it's really high, higher than the compound is like two or three times from 10% to 30%. This, this result suggests that our uh, particles uh, with have the positive chart of cytosans could possibly enhance the uptake efficiency of nanoparticles. And therefore, they can increase the permeability of cholesterol as well. So the last part, we just want to investigate the uh, cancer killings efficiencies of uh, cholesterol if they put in our nanoparticles they're gonna increase or not we use the cholesterol that's again proliferations of colorectal col colorectal cancer uh, we use the uh, multi -cell cellular tumor spheroid of uh, Colorectal cancer at the models to investigate the therapeutic effects of our nanoparticles. We just use and treat uh, for eight, uh, 48 hours with the various concentrations. If you can see the morphology of tumor spheroid, we observe under the bright field and fluorescent microscope. In the image, shows the just normal morphologies of the untreated uh, tumor spheroid. And the numbers of the cell death, which is the highlight in the, uh, the uh, stain with the, the red color, uh, were increased by treating with the cholesterol encapsulated in our nanoparticles compared to just uh, cholesterol itself. And we use the uh, assay to, to confirm our results. As you can see, it's really significant when you uh, use the con uh, concentration of cholesterol up to uh, 100 ppm. So it's very, very interesting results. The next, in the summary, you can see that we have developed and successfully uh, ev evaluated the improvement, the improved formulations of our bilone ozone nanoparticles. And our study showing that uh, our applications can increase stability in GI tract and also enhance the GI tract absorptions 
importantly, our particles can enhance the anti-cancer activity of cordycepin over the colorectal cancers uh, compared with the uh, free cordycepin. If you see that this successfully uh, uh, technologies is provide a uh, significant extension to the develop of uh, innovative products by using platform. This is just a model that's use use the cordycepin. However, it can apply into the broad spectrum of uh, oral assimilation sub substance such as the drug, the other biopharmaceutical agents, also the natural bioactive compounds to just to improve not just uh, for the human, but for the animals as well. And uh, actually, like if you interest in this study, we can check uh, it out in our articles or email us about more information. And we would to thank our wonderful collaboration from Jola Lungkorn University. That's, this work could not be done without them. And these technologies, we uh, in the middle of the transfer technology to the industrial, industrial and private sector to upscaling to use in the, the com commercials. And not just only Jola Lungkorn University, we have the wonderful collaborations in both uh, Thailand's private sector, and also the most important, we uh, have the strong collaborations with the uh, UCATCH, uh, University of Chinese Academy of Science. And we usually have the exchange wonderful PhD student from UCATCH, just as uh, uh, this year we have Simon Rat with us, and she's worked very really hard, and she's really wonderful PhD PhD student, and we can. Uh, I think like she's gonna give about short talk about our project after my presentations. So, anyway, this is our nano medicine team, and we have Dr. Natika Sanprit as a team leader and uh, incredible team member. This slide might be my end of my slide. So, I really happy to take any questions about it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. So, uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, yes, Kai has a question. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Hi, uh, Professor Katu uh, Nan Nandi. It's nice, nice to yeah. see you. Yeah, well, what a nice talk. Hi. So, yeah, I just uh, take uh, uh, this opportunity to ask you a question. So for your system, I think it's a very nice system. Uh, be, be, besides to uh, encapsulate the, it's called uh, cordycepin. Cordycepin. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, could, could, could we also use this system to encapsulate like MRA, this kind of payload? Oh, yes. I I said it's, it's possible, but but I think because. Uh, uh, they have to uh, pass the strong aesthetic system. MRNA might be broken during that. I think like if we have modified some things on the, on the membrane, maybe you have some idea about that. It's more stronger and more for like flexible for it. So I think it's possible to deliver MRNA to the small intestine. Okay, it's terrific. I, I, I think it's a very, it's, it's a very good uh, uh, concept. I, I can talk with, uh, okay, her and I, uh, and uh, <laughs> ask her to, to try use the, your system to encapsulate that uh, uh, MRA, because yes. for the oral administration, uh, it's a very interesting topic to develop mm. the, the oral vaccine, you know. Yes. Uh -huh. we, we, we can try this. It's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think so. I think like this platform just not only the cordycepin or like the, the drug we can extend to the vaccines, especially in the mRNA vaccines, we can create uh, some project to get the all share um, some idea later. 
Okay. Thank yeah, you. we talk the, the details later. Uh, great. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, for listening for your questions. So any questions? If not, okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Kothamudnamdi, for your presentation. Next topic, thank you. Yeah, next topic is the novel nanoscale delivery mRNA system for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine prevention and treatment. Presented by Ms. Pilum Lakdet Bamrung, PhD candidate in University of Chinese Academy of Science, UCAS, National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, NCST China. She has bachelor and master degree in pharmaceutical science, field of pharmacognosy, from Jalalongkorn University. She received a UCAS Royal Tiger Men's Scholarship to conduct her research at NCST. And now she is an exchange researcher at Nanotech under the co supervision of Dr. Kathawut Namdi and Professor Xin Si Liang. Please join me to welcome Ms. Pilun Lat Det Bangrung. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Pio Nat. Today, I would like to share about my joint research between the Chinese Academy of Science and Thailand's National Nanotechnology Center. In this talk, I will introduce my work on a novel nanoscale delivery system of mRNA for SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. I didn't hear your voice. Okay, okay, sorry for that. At first, let me introduce myself. I am a first year PhD student at the Laboratory of Controllable Nanopharmaceutical Nanotechnology in Beijing. I am doing the research under the supervision of Dr. Professor Liang Xinxia of the Nanotech, uh, sorry, of the NCNST and Dr. Nam D. Kathawood of the Nanotech. The International Research Exchange Program of Nanotech is continuously providing and supporting extensive help for this research between the two parties. Ultimately, this work has been highly supported by the Information Technology Foundation under the initiative of Her Royal Highness Princess Mahatri Sivinkorn. A quick more detail on this research. This work this work is a collaboration between Chinese Academy of Science and Nanotech. It was started in the March of 2022 in China.
for the meeting? Okay, one. Being done. In China, the research will be conducted at Professor Liang Laboratory of DNC and SP. But as we know, due to the going COVID-19 situation and related travel restrictions, this work is currently being performed at Dr. Nam D's lab for the preliminary, preliminary study and the foundation of the work. Let us move to the details. Back in 2019, a mystery coronavirus was firstly reported, which affected lots of people and accounted for fatalities. According to the data report by the WHO, it took almost of the year, almost half of the year for the first vaccine to be rolled out, which is the Spivac or Moderna's vaccine, followed by varieties of variances. For example, the beta variances in South Africa, Alpha in United Kingdom, or even Delta in, in, in India. About a year, the second vaccine, which is commonality, was available to the public. We know it as the Pfizer vaccine. After that, different types of vaccine were invented. Interestingly, only two first vaccines are used mRNA technology. Others are viral vector and inactuated type. By the numbers that recently took on the WHO website, almost 200 vaccines are under preclinical development and less are being slightly at the clinical research as shown in this table. Ribonucleic acid technology-based vaccines are counted about 18%, which is the second from the list. According to this table, we are interested in mRNA technology. Messenger RNA is a single-stranded molecule of RNA that corresponds to the genetic sequence of a gene and is read by a ribosome in the process of synthesizing a protein. In a plain speaking, the mechanism of mRNA vaccine is that it tells our cells how to make a protein that will trigger our immune response. The mRNA vaccine is safe. It does not enter the nucleus. So it does not alter the human genome. It does not use activated virus. Hence, it cannot cause any infection with the virus that makes COVID-19. The manufacturing of is affordable at a large scale in the comparison with other types. However, short half life and less stability of the mRNA are remaining a challenge. In our work, we are using lipid nanoparticles to accommodate the mRNA due to its known biocompatibility with aim for high loading capacity and good stability. The ultimate goal is to improve the vaccine efficiency. So far, my work is planned into three phases. At first, we are developing the mRNA, oh sorry, we are developing the vehicle for the mRNA. After that, the mRNA will be encapsulated into the nano cargo with the several characteristics, including the size and the stability over time. 
in the second phase. After we get the lipid nanoparticle encapsulated mRNA, we will conduct both in vitro and in vivo studies and related characterization. After that, clinical study will be performed at the last phase. At the present, we have a compromised system and now we are optimizing for the desired characteristics. This is the end of my presentation today. I would like to acknowledge Professor Liang Xingxia and Dr. Nam Di Katawut for kindly supported this work. This wonderful work could not have happened without support from Pat Nada Joint Research Project, the UK and the Royal Thai Government Scholarship of Thailand. Also for the wonderful people who taking care of the International Research Exchange Program of Nanotech. These three photos show the lively work environment at the Nanotech. I will update the progress of this work later on. I am now welcome all your questions. Thank you. Much for your presentation and valuable information. So, um, any questions from the audience? Uh, uh, I got a quick question. So, you showed a slide about how do you uh, the research plan, and my question is: uh, It seems like it's it looks similar to the uh, the standard formulation. So, my question is. Uh, what is the difference of your formulation compared to the Moderna system? Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Uh, what is the difference is the lipid, lipid um, to be, to be, What's different? Because we have different types of lipid that we can choose. Yep. So, so we can try to combine the different ratio or even mm -hmm. different types of lipid to get the desired characteristic for that system. I see. So you're trying to basically um, screen or select a specific Yes. ratio of the four component yes but uh as i know um both madonna biontech and several uh company not several as i know many company in china they are trying to do the same thing to to select a formulation that are different with the patent the the patent formulation by i think it's Arculus or madonna so they have a quite wide Pattern coverage, so um, I think it's very important to to find your own formulation, which is not covered by previous company. That will be a really breakthrough, and then if you find the good formulation, that will be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The main uh, the main goal of our work is optimize for the safer and less effect for the people that able to shoot because now we have only two MIA technology based vaccine. Yeah. Some people allergy for some components for that. I see. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Singh, for your questions. So, uh, any questions? Thank you very much, Ms. Pimunat, for your wonderful presentation. May I call on screen, Professor Dr. Oh, Shia Singh, Principal Investigator of National Center of Nanoscience and Technology in CSC Chinese Academy of Science. China to give a talk on engineering the 
DNA nano devices for biomedical applications. Typical interests include DNA nanotechnology, self-assemble biomolecules, and dark delivery. Professor Ting has published high-impact research work as the record corresponding other in top journals such as Major Material, Major Biotechnology, Major Communications, and Journal of the American Chemical Society. So now the screen is yours, Professor Ting, please. Yep, thank you. Uh, can you see the screen, right? My shared PowerPoint. I can see your screen. Okay, great. So first, thank you for your introduction. And then I, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the chance to introduce our recent work. And also, I think this type of conference is quite important. I think it will um, you know, stimulate the further uh, collaboration between Thailand and China. I really ha I hope that this type of conference, there will be more in the future. And then today, for my own research, I'd like to talk about uh, how can how we engineer the DNA assemblies and DNA device for um, you know uh, mainly about drug delivery. Yeah. Um, so as we know, in the anniversary journal of science, uh, one twenty five anniversary journal of science is rise twenty five big question facing science. One of them is. How far can we push chemical self assembly? So, the basic direction is we want to realize the controlled assembly of hierarchical structure with customized property and functions. But at the meantime, uh, ph pharmaceutical industry have developed different types of drugs. For example, the small drug molecule or macromolecule bi uh, biomolecule drugs, but they have all different kind of uh, you know challenge to be to be to be solved or problem to be solved. For example, the small molecule it has high toxicity and low specificity, and they have quite short half life. And for this biomolecule drugs, um, usually they have insufficient stability, and it, it, they have quite low bioavailability, and then it's very difficult to transpass the memory and then get to the position that will exert their functions. So, um, the pharmaceutical development demand precisely assemble the drug carrier so, they, so we can realize the target delivery of this, this all kinds of drugs to achieve the optimal therapeutic effect. So, uh, the building block we are using for chemical self-assembly and for the construction of uh, drug delivery system is we are using DNA or RNA, the natural um, nucleic acid molecule. So, for example, for DNA, it's well known the genetic information carrier due to the base pairing and the multiple hydrogen bond, it could form quite clear uh, three-dimensional structure that the diameter of DNA is about two nanometers. So, through the rational design of the sequence and all kinds of structures, we could use DNA molecule as a building block to construct all kinds of uh, structures from the nanoscale to even the microscale. For example, we can develop a two-dimensional array, a three-dimensional cage, and using the brick system, we can construct a three-dimensional structure. Also, through the rational design of the DNA origami system, we could generate two-dimensional or three-dimensional nanostructure with controlled size or shape. We can also um, rationally design the three-dimensional structure with controlled three-dimensional curvature. So we have some really special advantage in control of the size and shape of uh, a nanostructure, so which is uh, not easy for other um, uh, nanoparticle system or other uh, nanostructures. So, and, uh, we can also use DNA nanostructure to control this kind of nano device, or you can call them nano robot or nano machine. So we can realize control the mechanical motion um, using the DNA nanostructure system. For example, they can walk along pre designed landscape. They can also deliver nanoparticle after they walk to a different position. They can, for example, this is a nano barrel system. They could recognize the surface protein on the cell surface and then realize the mechanical motion and open the structure. They can also realize controlled motion under electric field. But this type of uh, structure have shown quite good proof of concept. 
but they were all constructed and demonstrated their mechanical motion in the test tube. So in special uh, design, the laboratory um, platform, all most of them are just in the test tube. So how can we use this system for more specific or more pra practical um, uh, uh, drug delivery system is what we are quite interested in. So for example, the work in my lab, we're trying to go from the interesting structure to all kinds of functions. For example, we use DNA structure and then we co-assemble them with different particles on the wire, a biological functional molecule and small molecules. And we're, we try to realize controlled assembly and then to generate functional non-structures and then use this structure to realize drug delivery and biosensing. So that's the main um, research scheme in, in my lab. So for example, previously we have shown we use DNA nanostructure, we can template uh, different kinds of molecule and then generate this kind of functional nanostructure. For example, we can template to control the three-dimensional structure of gold nanosphere, gold nanorod, or gold prism for the study of uh, optical property. For example, this kind of multi gold nanostructure could be used for single molecule Raman study. And then we can also use the system for the fabrication of conducting nanowires. And also we can um, co-assemble with uh, this uh, uh, AIE molecule to generate the specific the circular polarized luminescence uh, uh, functions. So uh, this is how we um, use DNA template to co-assemble with different um, structure, including uh, besides this, we can also use this system to co-assemble with uh, uh, like a nucleic acid molecule or peptide or protein. So we have tried um, different uh, type of co-assembled system. And then what we are interested in is how can we realize uh, some unique biomedical application. For example, as a drug carrier, we all know um, the drug carrier should have good biocompatibility and biosafety. And then they should have a good EPR effect or they could be used to modify with effective targeting group. And also it would be great they can realize they can you know, have this extremely responsive property so we can use them for control release. And then it would be great that we can synergetically deliver multiple therapeutic components. And then we find that actually DNA have some special features, make them quite good candidate for drug delivery. For example, they are uh, they have quite good biocompatibility. For example, the food we eat every day um, all contain nucleic acid. And then we have found that in quite a wide range, they didn't show any obvious cytotoxicity. And then actually the, uh, the immune response uh, is one concern. So we have two strategies. One way is we can design the sequence to remove the DNA sequence that can stimulate, stimulate uh, immune response. So the whole structure will be uh, inert drug delivery system. In another way, we can also encoding or assemble multiple component with um, uh, immune response so the system could work as a vaccine adjuvant. And another feature is that we can realize the design, the size, and 3D geometry. So we have found there that many drug delivery, actually not all of them, but most of them are in spherical structures. So the question is, is the nanoparticle, spheric, uh, spheric nanoparticle the best shape? So the answer is quite clear that they are not the best for all the, you know, disease. The main reason is many of the other drug delivery system, they could you they could only fabricate spherical nanoparticle. So for us, we can realize we can control the size and 3D geometry actually for the drug delivery system. We can also realize the addressable modification. So we can control the number of targeting ligand and also the special arrangement of this ligand so we can realize design or enhanced um, targeting effect and finally we can also realize control the mechanical operation which could be used for drug release 
So um, after I uh, started my lab at the beginning, uh, my group actually among the first uh, group that study the biomedical effect of DNA origami. So we find that even though you know DNA duplex or DNA single strand cannot be internalized by the cell, but after we assemble them into specific size, and DNA origami can be internalized by tumor cell. And then we find that a scavenger receptor play a very important role. And, and also the size and shape uh, affect the cellular uptake quite clear. So uh, we have used this system to deliver the therapeutic uh, chemo drugs and then enhance the, the internalization of Dr. Robinson by the origami. And then they can kill the uh, dog's resistance to myself quite efficiently. And then uh, my group uh, was also the first group to um, study the biodistribution of the origami uh, in mice model. So we find that they could, you know, depends on the size and shape, and then they could accumulate at the tumor quite efficiently. And then after they co-deliver the dog leverson, they could enhance, they could actually um, in inhibit the growth of tumor while maintaining the body weight quite stable. So. Uh, but while in the same dosage, the Dr. Robinson here shows some inhibition of the tumor growth, but the body weight of the mice decreased dramatically. So actually, we could enhance the tumor um, accumulation and then decrease the system toxicity. And then we can also use this system delivering the gold rod uh, into the inner part of the tumor. And then we can use this system to realize photoacoustic imaging and also for phototherapy. therapy. And then recently, we also used the DNA structure as a platform for delivery of, uh, uh, actually, for the delivery of uh, this, uh, what we call um, the shRNA template. So it's a piece of DNA um, duplex template that could be transcript, transcript into shRNA. So after the dicer uh, uh, actually cut this shRNA, it could, uh, you know, um, be transformed into isRNA for RNA interference. So the target protein is one of them, HPTB protein, one of them is surviving protein. So in our system, we hope this combined gene therapy and, and Docs Robinson, so could inhibit the growth of the, of the tumor efficiently. So we also uh, attached um, different aptomer for enhanced tumor accumulation. And then we find that uh, we actually could construct the structure very successfully. We can control the number of uh, HH, SHRNA template very carefully, and then they could be uh, actually uh, it have enhanced stability compared to the bare uh, SHRNA template. And then the whole system could be internalized by the cell efficiently, and then in the cellular level, we find that the survivability of the dog's resistant uh, 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 tumor cell could be uh, inhibited quite efficiently. And then we can also uh, analyze the MRA uh, uh, level, and also we can also analyze the protein expansion level. We could downregulate one protein or two proteins at the same time. So this system, we have studied about distribution. We find that it could accumulate at the tumor site much better than uh, liver or kidney. So it is quite clear. And then this is the uh, tissue. Um, we find that it could accumulate in, in the tumor uh, uh, quite well. And then in the uh, mice model, we find that this combined therapeutic strategy could inhibit the growth of tumor very well. And then we also analyzed uh, 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 the uh, relative MRA level. We find that uh, the MRA could be done regulate quite efficiently in the animal uh, uh, level. So further, we actually designed an intelligent delivery system, what we call the DNA nano robot or nano device. So this is the, a joint project uh, uh, my, by my group and then several other groups. So Professor Nia and Professor Zhao is uh, 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 the PI in our center. They are the experts in tumor microenvironment and also in uh, the, the bio safety and then nanotoxicity. So my 
the basic idea is we try to develop a new therapeutic strategy, what we call the coagulation-based tumor therapy. So basic idea is we try to block the tumor blood supply to starve the tumor to death. But it's quite difficult to realize because it's quite difficult to control that the, the you know the coagulation happened only in the tumor, but in but not in the brain or in the you know in the heart. So uh, my group designed uh, a DNA origami system. For example, it firstly it's a rectangular origami sheet. The lens is about sixty nanometer by ninety nanometers, and then we can assemble the thrombin protein over here, and then we can use the DNA, um, what we call the locking strand, to in to basically lock the structure into a tubular structure. So in the delivery system, the protein inside could be protected quite well, and then they will not leak out to generate any side effect. Only after they reach the, uh, the tumor-related uh, endothelial cell, and then there, there is like uh, the biomarker protein. Uh, after recognized protein, the structure will re reconfigurate and then extirp expose the protein so they will generate the, the tumor uh, uh, site uh, coagulation effect. So the whole system is an automatic opening system after the molecular recognition, right? So, um, and also it exerts the effect at the interface of tumor vessel and blood. They don't need to get into or get internalized into the tumor cell. And then it's a cascade reaction, so we don't really need high dosage. So using the design of DNA on the robot, robotic system, we can realize the targeting effect, the protecting effect, and controlled release effect. Yeah. So here is the, uh, the structure of the DNA uh, locking strand. So at the beginning, the locking strand, will, it's this part. And then it, this is the side view of the tube. So at the beginning, it was uh, 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 hybridized, a partially hybridized state. So they could actually lock the strand into a tubular structure. After they recognize the protein, uh, there will be a reconfiguration. So part of the sequence will bind the target protein with quite low K, and then they could basically um, release the, this part. So the fluorophore and quencher, when the structure is in closed state, they are basically in quite close proximity, and then the fluorescent is quenched. And then after the rookite protein, it will reconfigurate and then make the you know separation of fluorophore and quencher. So the fluorescent signal will be recovered. Yeah. So based on this design, we have shown that we also use the flow cytometry to verify the opening. For example, uh, the locking strand uh, we have uh, verified. And also in the, the whole nano device or nano robot system, they can recognize protein and then um, reconfigure, reconfigurate and, and then recover the fluoric signal. And then we also, in the test tube, uh, in the uh, 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 plasma, after we add the robot and also add the tumor-related vascular endothelial cell, it basically could stimulate opening of the, of the device, and then they could uh, stimulate the whole um, thrombosis process. So they could generate on-site tumor uh, oculation. So, but in this system, in the blood sample, basically will speed up the coagulation of, of this uh, of the whole blood system. We also verify that we label the uh, uh, the cell membrane with green fluorescent uh, probe. We also label our structure with the red fluorescent signal. So from the after incubation, from the you know time about one to eight hours, most of the um, DNA and robot uh, accumulate and stay on the cell surface. So you could see the light yellow signal. And then in, this is uh, this part was mostly done by Professor Nia's group. So they have studied uh, um, the uh, uh, targeting effect in the uh, mice model. They could accumulate at tumor site quite efficiently. And then based on different time point, we find that you know at the beginning most of the structure were in the liver and kidney. And then along with the uh, time, and then we find that about eight hour to ten hour. Uh, most accumulation happened in the tumor. And then even after 24 hours, most major organ, you know, they have been cleared out. And then, but in the tumor, we still find quite clear signal. So it means we, we have quite good um, targeting effect.
And then after 24 hours, we collect uh, uh, the tumor tissue, we find that we have seen clearly this um, uh, thrombosis effect. So along uh, you know, with the time, the, the, the thrombosis will be, the, the effect will be uh, increased actually, yeah. And then in the mice model, we find that it could basically inhibit the growth of tumor in breast tumor, in myeloma tumor, and also ovary tumor. Especially, it also could inhibit the growth of tumor for the primary lung tumor. So um, here is one of the uh, uh, here is one of the uh, mice model, and then we see quite uh, clear the tumor inhibition, and then elongate slide rate. Yeah. So this work uh, has been highlighted by uh, many uh, top journals like Nature Real Cancer and Nature Biotechnology. So one of the uh, comment is that our system represented a novel approach that could transfer how we think about drug delivery. So this was also elected as the top technique advance in you know, 2018, was also selected by the Ministry of Science and Technology as the top 10 advanced in science in China. Yeah. So we also try to use our system to deliver some other therapeutic component. This time we constructed a DNA device vaccine system. So this time we deliver our system, we loaded our structure with one type of tumor antigen, peptide antigen, and then one DNA adjuvant and one RNA adjuvant. And then the whole system, uh, uh, you can see we can control um, the amount that was loaded in each um, delivery uh, structures. And then the whole structure, we designed this uh, DNA locking strand that could be, that could reconfigurate responding to the uh, pH uh, in the uh, uh, DC cells. For example, the DC cell actually have, uh, the, the, the endosome of DC cell have two major pathway receptor. One is um, TOLAC uh, receptor three and TOLAC receptor nine. So we released these two adjuvant will co-stimulate uh, this um, DC cell so we can realize the antigen specific CTL response, right? So we can control this, uh, the structure to elicit a striking but controlled immune response because we can precisely control the amount of this therapeutic component. Um, basically, we can realize uh, quantitatively uh, loading of the structure. So they could respond and then reopen at this uh, acid environment. So, we would, uh, so the whole structure after incubation with this uh, uh, BMDC cell, they could realize quite uh, a good antigen presetting effect, and then they can accumulate in the lymph node efficiently, and then we can realize the antigen specific CDL response to kill the cell that express the, the, the antigen. And then we find that our system could uh, basically inhibit the tumor growth with quite low dosage. So compared to the previous report, we have used uh, about seven uh, one seventh of the antigen and then about one tenth of the adjuvant. And then the whole system could work uh, in the uh, B16 uh, F10 monoloma tumor and also the MC38 uh, tumor system. Yeah, we can because we can change uh, uh, the tumor uh, antigen sequence. And then we can use this system to generate. Basically, they could against, we realized uh, they, they could against the tumor. Uh, metastasis, they can also generate a long-term uh, T-cell response that can protect the mice against the tumor challenge. Yeah. So uh, in short summary, uh, we our work is based on the rational design, the DNA structure. We can kind of co-assemble them with a different functional group. And then using uh, the rational design, we could uh, generate a stimuli responsive system like another device and another robot. And then we can realize uh, a debatable tumor therapy. Yeah, so I would like to thank my students and my collaborators. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor yeah. Ting, for your talk. And I hope you all enjoyed this informative talk and a very, very lots of great work. So any questions? Certainly, please. Um, thank you, Professor. It's really interesting about the, especially about the nano robots. Actually, yeah, thank our, you. our group. Uh, working on the nano robotic as well is the mm -hmm. frontier research of the NASDAQ frontier research. So hope we can mm -hmm. do more collaboration. Yeah, collaboration. Yeah.
and uh, I'm wondering about the the uh, the tube, the nano robot yeah. system, the tube that you put the thrombin inside. So, yeah. So, uh, what is the targeting ligand that you used to to target the the the, the, the cancer tumor? Yeah. Because yeah. For the demonstration, we are using the uh, I think it's nucleolin. So we're using an aptamer for the nucleolin. Um, that highly expressed in on the surface of tumor vascular endothelial cell. Yeah. Okay. And and how you control the I mean the number of thrombin inside the yeah. the, the, the tube. Okay. So here is the design. So for our structure, one of the unique uh, property is that we can actually elongate a DNA sequence with control the sequence at the designed position. For example, we can control where and we want to extend it, this uh, linking strand. Also, we can control the number of the linking strand. And then we can basically chemically modify the thrombin. And then through the DNA hybridization, we could control the loading number of this uh, protein. So this type of uh, strategy could be used to link different uh, functional groups. Yeah. One more question. Yeah. Um, how the the this nano robot circulate? I mean, the the how long this nano robot circulate in the blood circulations? So the half life is in uh, we usually count them uh, as several hours, but we can see from the you know biodistribution over here. So um, in after twenty four hours, we still have quite clear signal in the. Um, you know, the tumor region, but about eight to 10 hours, we have the highest accumulation in tumor. Yeah. But the blood circulation is only in several hours. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank By you for the question. Yeah. Professor Ting. Yeah, um, hello. Very nice, yeah. very interesting and exciting presentation. Thank you very thank much. You. Um, I, I have questions um, based on your slide. One slide mm -hmm. you mentioned DNA mm -hmm. origami concept. And yeah. um, I saw um, one parameter you put there annealing. So could you yeah. share with us um, what, what do you mean by annealing? Thermal annealing or? Yeah, or thermal annealing. Basically, we control the temperature pattern or we control the you know thermal cycling. And then we have different program that will suit different structure yeah okay yeah so that team seems to be very um important factors in fabricating your yes and in yes. robots as well yes so um basic idea is depending on the structure design we would use different um you know uh, thermal cycling program to increase the yield okay yeah yeah all right, another question. Apart from um, chip factor, mm -hmm. um, do you see any other structural factors in your development? So one of them is the size and shape, and then the targeting ligand is the main factor that affect their biodistribution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Very good. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Professor Ding for a very yep. great uh, informative talk. So now uh, I would like to invite Dr. Denpen Saprung, Alison, okay. Group Director of Responsive Material and Nano Sensor from Nanotech NASDA, to introduce her research group. Dr. Denpen graduated her doctoral degree from University of Oxford, UK. She has got many awards from both national and international, such as leaders in innovation fellowships. LSE People's Choice Award from Teaching Competition from the Law and Law Academy of Engineering. And she also uh, Royal Society of Chemistry in the field of disease diagnosis, uh, graphic development, nanopore technology, and the sensor platform. Currently, she also uh, Royal Society of Chemistry representative in Thailand. So please give a warm welcome to the third thing that room. Dr. Nguyen, and now you are muted. Uh, thank you, uh, Kumi Paphon, for uh, 
really kind introductions. So today I'm going to present some of the research or the, the innovation that have done in our group. Uh, our group name Responsive Materials and Nano Sensor or RMNS Research Group. So we have a core technology about like a design and synthesis the uh, nano materials and also the nano structure, for example, like a nano needle, nano pore to and then integrate to be a smart devices for medical application like a health sensor and environmental sensors. We have three teams or three labs in our research group, which uh, the first one is responsive nanomaterials who specialize on the design and functionalize the nanomaterials. The second group is the nano needle team or NND team or NND lab who specialize on the like, fabricate the uh, nanostructure, nano needles, nanopore. And the last team is the nano diagnostics or NDX team. This team gonna integrate like a uh, nanostructure, nanomaterials into the smart devices uh, to, to make like a uh, smart sensor for health and uh, environment. So actually we work together, so we cannot uh, divide it, the team actually. And uh, the, sorry, the, the, some examples that we have done or innovations that we developed in our, our team to tackle the COVID-19 pandemics. I will give you two examples. The first one, we, because we have a core technology about the, the uh, design and synthesis nano, special nanomaterials and the, the technique to conjugate the nanomaterial with the targeting molecule. So we develop the uh, antigen rapid test, the COVID-19 antigen rapid test by using the lateral flow immuno technique or L LFA technique, we uh, successfully developed both the professional use and the home use of the antigen rapid test for COVID-19 screening with quite high specificity and sensitivity. Our uh, test kit uh, passed the Thai FDA approval as well and uh, has been used to screen for a uh, uh, nanotech and NASDAQ staff at the moment and uh, sent to some hospitals and some organization to use in, in that hospital too. This slide to show you the, the quick guide of the, the, the reference guide in the, the test kit, professional test kit. And the next one that developed in our group as well is the uh, the, the pressure helmet, the positive and negative pressure helmet, or we call in sphere for the, the COVID-19 patients and for the medical staff who were working like quite closely with the, the COVID-19 patients. So um, we developed two, uh, the, the, the helmet. The first one which show in red or a little bit pink here is the negative pressure helmet. This one is for patients, for the COVID-19 patient to prevent the, the spread out of the uh, virus particles. And the second one is the, the blue one here, we call the positive N-sphere, which is the positive pleasure helmet. So this one is for uh, medical staff who look after the patients or who have to deal with the, uh, the risk environment so in these two helmet, we put the HEPA filter to, to filter the, the virus particles and also put the sensor, which is the, the, the pressure uh, sensor inside our helmet. Our helmet has the, the standard uh, medical test and uh, sent to several hospitals uh, and a medical unit in Thailand, probably more than 45 uh, hospitals used uh, our helmet, both positive and negative helmet, especially the, the dialysis unit, you know, like uh, the patients who got the, the, the kidney problem need to do dialysis every day, every week. They have to sit like uh, in a small room to do dialysis like uh, several hours per day. It's better for them to protect 
the infection of the of the the COVID nineteen infection and also protect the the doctor or the nurse who look after them in that in that room. So they used uh, our helmet to to protect themselves and uh, protect other people in the rooms. And now the both the uh, COVID nineteen test kit and the 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 helmet that I showed you here has been uh, licensed to the company in Thailand to do like a uh, commercialization. Uh, the next innovations from our research team is the research and also innovation that support the BCG and also the SDG, which is the sustainable sustainable development goals. Because uh, our group are mostly working on like a medical device uh, medical application. So basically, we support the, the SDG goal number three, which is good health and uh, well-being. Here are some examples of the our test kit that we developed in our group. Uh, the COVID nineteen antigen test kit. I already mentioned that previously, and. Uh, uh, the antigen test kit for influenza A and also infer influenza B, microalbumin test kit. So these three test kit using the, the core technology from our team, which are the nanomaterial, spatial nanomaterial, and uh, the, the technology that we can uh, conjugate with the, the targeting, spatial targeting ligands. We also developed the quantitative test kit which is the nanomaterials combined with the targeting ligand and uh, develop the portable device plus the application to control the portable device and to, to collect the data. Because we are working with the medical device and uh, medical applications, we have quite strong collaborations with the doctor and the staff from the, the hospitals, from the medical schools, all over Thailand, for example, the Rama Tipudi Hospital, um, Jualongkorn Hospitals, uh, Sirilat Hospital, and Sinakarin uh, Hospitals from the Kongan Universities. And this is the, an example that we used uh, our test kit in the field uh, by the, the, our customer or and also our collaborator, which is the the chronic kidney disease, Northeast Thailand, or CKDNet, which is like a, the, the project set up, or is kind of foundation, you know, set up by the Kongan University to, to, to help to uh, slow down the progressions of the chronic kidney disease. Because uh, in, in the Northeast of Thailand, you know, the, the prevalence of the chronic kidney disease is really high in some area is highest in the world. So this the foundation or this project had been set up to slow down the progression of of the CKD uh, CKD patients. So so we uh, sent our uh, innovation, our test kit, both the, the, the rapid test and the quant quantitative test kit to CKD uh, net and to people in the Kongan area to use together with other activities. So, so they claim that by using our test kit together with other activities, they can kind of slow down the progression of, of the CKD patient from the early stages to the late stages up to 20 to 20%. So uh, at the moment, they're still working on this project and we are working together. We expand our collaboration because we have um, like a core technology about the sensor development. So we expand from the health, the sensor for health to, to the environment. We develop like a test kit to, to, to detect, to screen for some chemical contaminated in in the water and soil in the area that we found the high prevalence of the CKD patients. And we found some, some, you know, like correlated between the, some chemical and the prevalence or the number of the CKD patients. So we, now we've got some more budget, some more grant to do more about this project. 
uh, the next one is the, the innovation from our research group that nearly to be commer commercialization is the, the core technology about the micro nano needle, which is the nano structure uh, fabrication is from the nano needle group, nano needle team or nano needle lab. So this technique is the less invasive and uh, it can, can be used as like a drug delivery and also sensor on, on human skin. In our research group, you know, we can, we can produce like a large, I mean, the, the large scale of the micro needle and also the nano needle. We can fabricate the, the, the micro needle on like a soft substrate, like a fabric, fabrics. Um, and also we can control the size of the tip and also the base or even the height of our micro needles, we can control the, the chef, you know, uh, of the base or the, the cone of the micro needle. We can control the density of the micro needle on the soft materials. And um, we have uh, several IPs and uh, um, at least one company license our IP. In our research group, we also qualify for the ISO 13485, which is the quality management system for uh, international uh, standard medical devices. We also are preparing to, to transfer the, this tech, I mean, to spin off uh, this technology to do like a startup. And uh, because of this, uh, because we have like a, a trade secret, also the IP about the the uh, the fabrications of micro and nano needles. So uh, it can apply for both sensor and also the drug delivery, even like a vaccine delivery. The next one is about the research that led to our seminar today. Which is the, um, the 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 basic research, a little bit basic research about the the one technique that we use to amplify the biomolecules, which is the microRNA molecules. The microRNA is the short RNA, you know, like uh, the 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 size is around 19 to 20, 22 nucleotides, which is really short. So because the 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 short of the microRNA is a uh, different difficult to amplify the this kind of uh, the RNA to, to detect. So we use the one technique called the rolling circle amplifications or RCA to amplify this technique at the, uh, just one temperatures. And uh, we demonstrate and publish our paper in anal analysis in, two, in 2019. So in this paper, we we showed that we can detect the two different microRNA, which is the microRNA twenty one, and also microRNA two one zero, which is the biomarker for the lung cancers. And uh, we successfully uh, detect the microRNA using this technique. Or oh, actually, this technique we combine the rolling circle amplification with the first sense detection technique. So basically we use the graphene oxide nanoparticles to, to quench the probe after we do the, the RCA reactions. And then using this uh, com complex put in the RCA uh, product and the probe which we have the first sense level will detach the complex and bind to the, the target uh, strands from the RCA products. So by using this the technique, we, we successfully uh, detect the microRNA from the, 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 the cancer cell line and uh, from the, the, the RNA that extract from the human serums. And this, this uh, study had been picked to be like a cover of, of the journal as well. So the next one, published in the same year in analytical biochemistry, we uh, further develop uh, by integrate our system, I mean, both the rolling circle ampli 
amplification and uh, and uh, first end detection into the microfluidic chip. We designed our microfluidic chip and also uh, developed like a, um, a small heater controlled by the microcontroller unit and connect to the like an application on the smartphone to to control the temperature of the heater, and uh, by using the microfluidic combined with the this microcontroller unit, we uh, successfully use this system to detect the microRNA twenty nine A and also a single mutation of of the microRNA twenty nine A. And also the micron A 144, which is the, 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 the biomarker for cervical cancers. So I think because this the study that uh, make be what interested in our team and want to join our team. And uh, I think the uh, be what will, which is uh, who is our PhD student gonna talk about uh, his thesis after my presentations. And uh, here are our research teams from three lab and three groups. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Duncan, for your wonderful talk. Uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please. As a uh, so, uh, for your uh, for your COVID nineteen uh, test kit, so w uh, what's the principle you use? You know, you already have two way. One is uh, based on the PCR to measure the gene. Uh, another way is uh, just to use the antibody. Uh, you know, like uh, use the gold not particle count with the antibody to visualize. So, which way for for your test kit? Um, this one is the. The, the the nanoparticles conjugated with the the, the targeting ligands so to to uh, detect the antigen. I see. Oh. I see. Okay. It's so not the acid detection is just like a rapid test. You know, detect the 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 the, the proteins of of the COVID nineteen. Uh huh. So it's visible, right? To see the right line. Yes, you can see the red color of the line, the control line and the test line. It depends on the the size of the particle and the type of the particle that you used. Sure, sure, sure. So by this way, can you tell the the different uh, you know subtype of the of the virus? <laughs> oh, you mean the mutation? The mutation, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, mostly the mutation happen on the S protein. Or the spike proteins, but uh, our test kit we target the N protein, which is the, which is quite conserved. So basically, we we cannot uh, discriminate the mutations from by using our uh, screening test kit. If you want to I discriminate, see. you have to do PCR, I think, to to uh -huh. see the mutation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For another thing is uh, for the uh, vaccine. I, I know you also use the micro needle to do the vaccine delivery. So uh, mm -hmm. it is correct? I, based on my understand. Uh, just the beginning. Oh, see, oh, see. But but you use the micro needle, the yes. nano needle. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, the patch. I only I only need be concerned about the depths, you know, of the needle. If it's mm -hmm. too slow, uh, do the depths will depths uh, affect the you know? The immune uh, response uh, to to shallow. I I worry about. Uh, actually, we can control you know the height of the the oh. the the, the micro needles. So that oh. one we have to try. I mean, is on the process of uh, uh, R and D. You know, like uh, to 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 develop this this thing, but we gonna. I think we're gonna try with the one that we have already first. So, the the thing is, it's just the beginning. So I cannot tell you in in detail. Uh, if we successfully develop this uh, vaccine patch, we're gonna present to you for sure. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very good. Thanks. Thank you very much for your question. So, uh, any questions on the floor? 
okay. If not, thank you very much, Doctor and Principal, for your presentation. So our last but not least speaker, Mr. Biyawati Dikulatham, a PhD candidate in University Chinese Academy of Science, UCAS, National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, SNT China. Today he will give a talk on detection of miRNA expression in saliva for the diagnosis of oral cancer diseases. Mr. Biyawati graduated his bachelor degree in applied Thai traditional medicine from the Lat Hospital, Hospital University. Graduated his master degree in biomedical engineering from Mahidol University. And now he is a, a PhD uh, and work at Nanotech under the supervision of the Golden Pen Zafung and Professor Bao Xia Ting. So welcome Mr. Biawa, please. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Biawa Pitikun Tam. And feel like I'm the last one for today. Hopefully, everyone does not feel too sleepy. I feel like it's my honor to give the presentation today. So, the topic that I'm going to talk today is about the detection of the mRNA expression in saliva for diagnosis of oral cancer disease. First of all, I would love to introduce myself specifically. Actually, I'm a PhD student who is studying in China, and that is why I was invited to talk about my work today in this session. So I received a scholarship from UCAS and Loyal Thai government um, for going to study at the University of Chinese Academy of Science. My professor is Dr. Ting Bao Chuan, that he has to have a speech before me, and in fact, I have to study in Beijing, but because of the pandemic of the COVID-19 um, since 2020, I feel like it's unbelievable. It has already two years. Until now, the China is still not around for any student to go back there. So I asked um, Dr. Dian Pen to be my co-advisor, and then I joined the International Research Exchange Program at Nanotech. So that I can do my research in Thailand during this period of time. So the University of Chinese Academy of Science, or we can call like UCAS, was established in 1949, and it's compiled a hundred of institutes to our of China. They are research in every aspect. And for me, I'm staying in the National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, which is located in Beijing. So, okay, let's start. Today, I will talk about the detection of the mRNA that is related to the oral cancer and how to detect that thing in saliva. Um, actually, uh, in terms of the oral cancer, it means to the tumor development in any part inside the cavity, inside oral cavity. And the symptom can start from like my pain in your mouth or having a small wound, but the wound may be developed into a chronic wound or it cannot heal properly for a long time. So it is possible to develop into a tumor or malignant cancer. So the cause of oral cancer may be originate from several causes, or for example, like the smoking, alcohol uptaking, or the infection of the HPV virus. Nowadays, the diagnosis method is mainly uh, depend on the ritual examination and invasive biopsy for observing in pathological of cell. In worldwide, like more than 500,000 cases were diagnosed to have an oral cancer. 
So in the U.S., it is approximately um, 50,000 cases a year. What I want to highlight is more than 40% of patients with oral cancer can die within five years. So, but if we have an early detection, um, the survival rate will increase more than like double, which is 90%. So that is why we need to like fabricate the sensor for the early diagnosis of oral cancer. In this slide is showing the incident of the oral cancer in Thailand. Like you can see that oral cancer is the top five dominant cancer in Thailand in both male and female. And moreover, the number of cases in Thailand from 2012 to 2020 is like increasing by more than 23% and feel like the number is will be going up higher in the future. So let's see like what is miRNA? Actually miRNA is an endogenous non-coding RNA that is controlled like the gene expression. And so when the change in the concentration of this miRNA is maybe related to the development of cancer, as you can see from the figure on the right hand side, like uh, when there is a cancer inside the oral cavity, there will be some like exosomal RNA releases from the cancer cell into the saliva and also in the bloodstream. So we may be able to detect this miRNA as a biomarker in the saliva sample. Here there is a lot of like evidence and review that talking about the disintegration of miRNA in all kinds of body fluids, such as serum or saliva. And you can see the first graph on the left-hand side, um, which shows the expression of miRNA21 in the patient who have the oral, can oral sequimate cell carcinoma is higher than in the normal people. And also the different state of the cancer also have the different level of miRNA21 concentration. So if you want to detect the miRNA, how can we detect it? So normally we can use like the conventional PCR, but however, like mRNA is like a short span RNA which is containing only like 18 to 22 nucleotide, so it is too short to hybrid with the forward and the leeward primer for PCR, then we need to have some process to make this short stand RNA transform into a long stand RNA by modifying the tail and adapter, and then we can perform the PCR. And you can see that the process is very complicated and it takes a very long time. So that is another strategy to amplify the small amount of mRNA to a lot of mRNA. So it is called the rowing circle amplification, which is a mechanism for the replication of DNA and RNA in virus. So the system we just need only several components like the circular template, polymerase target, polymerase target mRNA and then it can like generate a copy of the wrong stand which has the complementary sequence with the predecised circular template. So in this work we use a nanomaterial if this is a graphene with the well-known property of the graphene oxide which can be acts as a quencher and can bond with the single strand DNA via the pi pi stacking interaction. Uh, so when we add the single strand DNA in the graphene oxide solution, the single strand DNA will be absorbed on the surface and it will be quenched the first and signal. So in the presence of the complementary DNA when it like form the hybridization, this pre-absorbed DNA will be dissolved from the graphene oxide surface. So this phenomena can be observed by the fluorescent recovery that attached on the single strand DNA. And you can see when we increase the concentration of the graphene oxide mixing with the fluorescent 
single strand DNA is requested in the first cell response almost 90%. This slide is showing the concept of my work to detect the miRNA in saliva. The good thing when we mention about the saliva sample is it's a non-invasive and headless procedure that is like very easy to collect and anytime and anywhere. But and then when we got the saliva, we will add the saliva sample into the buffer reaction. This is will be amplified the number of miRNA in saliva by the lowering circle amplification. So we will get the amplified product. The amplified product will be uh, has the complementary sequence to the preabsorption probe on the graphene oxide. So it will induce the desorption from the surface, and then we will get the regain of the fluorescent signal, which can be analyzed by the portable fluorometer. The feasibility of our biosensor for detect miRNA was determined by the fluorescent spectral collector. Um, you can see like the discovery of the first and last one was shown in the left hand figure and in the presence of the and the absence of the target mRNA, our system can show the turn on and turn off in the first and signal less one. And actually, basically my RNA family member are like carry similar sequence to every age the selectivity and specificity of our sensor. We use a uh, uh, one base pair mismatch and three base pair mismatch to define the selectivity of our system. And the result show that you can see when we use the mRNA, it can have the fully response, but when we use one mismatch, it can, uh, the first response is decreased significantly. So this result is clearly confirmed that our sensor can distinguish the perfect complementary from the single base, free base, and mismatch sequence. So the sensitivity of our system uh, can be confirmed by detect the target miRNA in the different concentrations. It would vary from one femtomora to one nanomora. And the results show that the linearity range of detection is around one femtomora to one nanomora of miRNA. So limit detection of our platform is quite low, it's around 1.4 femtomora. And moreover, we have taste of the system in the real biological sample, which is the uh, sample of saliva from healthy volunteer. The recovery rate of the detection of saliva sample is acceptable and this has proved that our system is reliable and effective to detect uh, mRNA in the saliva sample. So in summary, uh, we have been successful to develop a novel biosensor for detect um, the mRNA-21 with speed on the fluorescence assay with highly sensitive and high selectivity. Um, and moreover, we believe that this approach can like possibly use for the clinical application and particularly in the early prognosis and diagnosis of oral cancer disease. So we're planning to collect the real sample from the patient will have the oral cancer and compare uh, our system, is it able to use or not, and we plan to uh, compare our result with the conventional method, like the pre-CR in the future. And thank you for your listening. I would love to say thank you to the International Research Exchange Program at Nanotech NASA Thailand, and you can or your Thai government will give me the scholarship and thanks for the RMNS school and Professor Dr. Ting Pao Chuan, like my advisor and my co-advisor Dr. Den Pen Sa Pung and also our member in the laboratory who supporting me and helping me when I'm staying here.
Thank you for your listening. Feel free to ask if you have a question. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, this thing is speakers and all participants for joining us and sharing your great work today. Vipapon. So would, would you like to ask? Yes, okay. yes. No, okay. not a question, but um, are we about to close the session? Right? Vipapon. Yes. yes. All right, yeah, I just would like to say a few words. If we um, are getting towards the end of the session, can I? Yeah, sure, Dr. Wandi. Yes, um, well, since, since I'm here, um, at first I thought I, I, I have to, um, to leave before the end of the session, but um, towards the end, I would like to say a few words. Um, I do appreciate everyone's contribution very much. And to me, by listening to the presentations, I, I learn new things and I can learn much more. Most importantly, I could see opportunities for us to, to join hands to extend our collaborations, either um, in, in the scope of our common interest or having new ways, new ways of um, Nano science and nanotechnology development based on our strengths, our capabilities. So I do look forward to further discussions among um, the two professors from NCNST, Professor Liang and Professor Ting, with our research teams led by Dr. Dian Pen and um, Dr. Katawood. So with my support, if you can see any possible ways or mechanism we can enhance our collaborations. Please say so anytime. So thank you very much for your presence, for your wonderful presentations today. So thank you. Vipapon, sorry, I, I do the closing for you without telling you beforehand, but it's my honor. So I would like to really thank everyone in this um, forum. Thank you so much. It's an honor for us as well to have you have a closing remark for us. So, and thank you very much once again, Dr. Wani and all distinct speakers and all participants for joining us and sharing your great work today. I sincerely hope we will continue to solve this, this, to solve the seeds of this successful relationship in some form or another. I do hope the situation of COVID-19 is better and allow us to have fair to fair meeting and more joyful day in China or Thailand with strengthened engagement with in-person Conversation from here. Before you leave, please give us a survey on wider application. It will be shown on your screen now. Wait a minute. Point. <laughs> Apart from the survey, Professor Liang, Professor Ting, and everyone, um, I think if you think it's not um, too much work, um, we can share later on if you can see getting together like this is um, useful. We can keep up to date. We can share our technological development among mm -hmm. us, you know, between NCNST and um, Nanotech. So this can be further discussed by Vipa Pond. Could you please um, later? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think it's yeah, a good I, idea. Uh, thank you. Need... Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone's um, efforts and contribution. Indeed. Okay. Okay. Great pressure. See you again. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, if anyone uh, who does please do the survey for us on the Slido, it will be shown on your the right hand side of the screen.
So, uh, oh, attendees, could you see your the Slido? Also, Pasupa, could you see the Slido? ก็ค่ะเห็นเห็นสไลด์โดตัวที่เป็นเซอร์วีไหมคะพี่ทําเสร็จแล้วค่ะเสร็จแล้วใช่ไหมคะโอเคขอบคุณมากนะคะพี่ม่วงพี่ม่วงพูดดียินดีค่ะมากเลยค่ะแล้วก็ถ้ามีอะไรให้แนะนำเทคช่วยเหลือก็แจ้งได้เลยนะคะแล้วก็หลังจากที่พี่ม่วงคุยกับทางกอพอห้าจะให้มีภาษาในต้นจมก็แจ้งวิภาพรได้ตลอดเลยนะคะได้ค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะพี่พี่ต้องส่งสไลด์ให้ไหมคะค่ะสไลด์ที่พี่ทำค่ะรบกวนพี่ม่วงส่งสไลด์ให้ได้ไหมคะได้ค่ะขอบคุณมากค่ะพี่ม่วงเป็นการติดเชื้อชายได้เลยค่ะได้ค่ะคุณวรชัยคะยังอยู่ในที่ประชุมไม่เอ่ยเราบอกว่าเพิ่มเซฟแชร์ใช่ไหมก็น่าจะโอเคแหละเพราะว่า